university, uh, unbelievably, is a $2 billion a year enterprise. And uh, over the last uh, literally half century, uh, we've seen the support from the legislature decrease as a percentage uh, of that total budget. And I know every year, every two years when the legislature rolls around, uh, your time and duties and responsibilities uh, change significantly. Uh, could you talk just a minute about kind of uh, your vision uh, on how the legislature could fund an enterprise like UT Austin, uh, uh, the best way of doing that, and, and how, how we fared in the last session of the legislature? Okay. Um, let me just talk about the legislative process. I do spend a lot of time, even when the legislature is not in session, uh, talking in my style is talk to individual legislators. I go myself and I get good, honest feedback in those conversations as well. During the session, I'm down there almost every day, sometimes seven hours a day. I think I met with 120 individual legislators in their offices, caucuses. Uh, and we have some great friends in the legislature, two of them who are here in the room, the speaker. Uh, Senator, um, and many other friends, um, and it's a, it, 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 it's a joy to go down and see the friends we have in the legislature. I actually enjoy that work. Maybe it comes from lawyering. I like dealing with people. Uh, I think I'm pretty good at the fact that somebody doesn't agree with you on an issue doesn't mean they're a bad person or a, uh, you know, they're representing their constituent. We're an important part of what the state's doing. We're not the only part of what the state's doing. They're making balances between community colleges and health care. So I enjoy that process quite immensely. Now, I will say, like many good things, by the end of the session, Senator, Mr. Speaker, you probably have the same view. You know, even chocolate fudge cake. By the time you get through your fifth piece or so, you might want to take a couple days off. <laughs> uh, but, but it is, I, that, it's democracy. And you'd be, some, I don't know, surprised, if, if you walk the halls of the legislature, people are working very hard doing what they think is in the best interest of the state of Texas. So in that sense, I, I enjoy it. When it comes to funding higher education, um, there's been a, a major shift, and certainly at a university like ours, uh, and a university like Texas A&M, uh, increasingly Texas Tech, uh, Houston, the, the major research universities. I think when I got here in 1977, something like 80% of our budget was general revenue. Now it's about 16% of our budget. Now in many ways that isn't surprising. We have a lot more philanthropy. We are second in the country behind only MIT for universities without medical schools uh, in federal research, uh, ahead of Berkeley. Uh, that's funding that's coming in that we were not getting 25 years ago. Uh, tuition is, is a more significant part of our budget. So in some ways, the whole funding of state universities has changed. The real issue, uh, and I think this is a serious challenge, not just for us, but for higher education, and frankly, K-12 education, which is equally important, junior colleges, community colleges. Um, you know, places that we're competing with, California, uh, North Carolina, uh, Michigan, typically spend about 3.5% of their GDP on higher education. We spend about 2.5% of our GDP on higher education. You do that year after year for 20 years, and it's going to make a difference. We're, we're, higher education is thinly funded. That won't be made up overnight, but you know, we need to be on the path to, to correct that balance with the other uh, important needs of the, of the state. So that's one issue. Um, the second issue really affects the research universities. Us, Texas A&M, again, Tech, Houston, uh, the emerging research universities. And that is the structure of the way we distribute general revenue, the formula, which has a lot of good aspects. It takes the distribution sort of out of individual political decisions, but it funds to the average. That is, the average.
average cost of engineering is the way the funding works, and in every other day. It's a complicated formula, but it funds to the average. A major research university is not an average cost university. Now, we want to be low cost compared to Michigan and Berkeley and the other major research universities. Uh, but that structure means that every session we come to people like the senator or the speaker or others and there are adjustments from it. By the way, small universities have the same sort of thing. So adjustments need to be made. So every session where, you know, if, if you're not in the sweet spot of the formula, you're always fighting against that and trying to do patchwork. I think that's something that we need to work on. Uh, the Competitive Knowledge Fund, now from research universities, which the speaker initiated and got going, it, it, it takes Tech, Houston, uh, University of Texas, and a and &M. And there's a formula based on the amount of research brought in. Um, and I think that's a terrific start. It's not not well funded yet, but I think that's a path into the, uh, into the future. Um, and you know, the way things get done in a democracy is you make these issues and you debate them and you work with your friends and, and we'll, make, we'll make progress. Um, along that same line, recently the governor, the lieutenant governor, and the speaker have asked all state agencies to look at their budgets and yeah. make a 5% uh, reduction. And I know that that's created a lot of tension on campus which seems to be compounded by paying some coaches millions and millions of dollars. Talk a minute about how those things balance and, and, and how we justify doing that. Well, these are difficult economic times. It's, it's difficult for parents and families. Uh, it is difficult for all of publicly funded projects, uh, whether it's higher education or not. Uh, it's difficult for business. But these are difficult economic times. By the way, how we do in these sort of bear markets are going to be as important how we end up 5, 10, 15 years from now as how we do in the, in the bull market. It's a very important time that we not just throw up our hands and say, oh, let's balance the budget. Okay, we've done it. Let's go on. We've got to do it as strategically as in the, in the good times. I think the next session is going to be a tough one on budget. There are some structural holes in the state budget. Uh, tax revenues, sales tax revenues are not coming in and recovering quite as rapidly. The last tick was a little bit up, but I think this could be a challenging time. I think the governor and the speaker and the lieutenant governor would have been derelict if they would waited till the session and not gone out to state agencies and said, you better start preparing for this. Uh, and that's what we're doing. It is a difficult time the campus. I can assure you we're not just doing it across the board. We're trying to do it as you know, protecting the, the core educational